So, Hogan, do you find a lot of times the president will not speak until John Kelly tells him to? That is absolutely ludicrous and ridiculous. I have been in so many meetings with the two of those men. The president runs this country. He makes the decisions. He sets the policy, sets the tone, and does all of that uh, at any point in time in a conversation. John Kelly executes exactly what the president wants him to do. We all offer our opinions and suggestions, but it is the president of the United States who runs this country. Okay, who do you believe, uh, General Kelly, a Marine general, or Amarosa? Right, a four-star Marine General John Kelly, who I work with closely every day, who I trust uh, uh, with everything I've got. I believe him 100 percent. More will come out about this, but the, the way she characterizes that meeting is completely false. Uh, and, and we'll have more to say on that, I'm sure, in, in the coming days and weeks. But uh, l let's, just, let's just pause for a second and see what we've got here. This is someone who's disgruntled, who is so self-serving, who has decided to go out and put out false accusations, uh, lies, and has already been proven to be contradictory in her own book. So this is someone with zero credibility in this town. And it's not unique in Washington, D.C. for people to try to make money off of deriding and disgracing right. Donald Trump. What is unique is someone who leaves the White House like Omarosa goes on a tour telling everyone how wonderful he is and how much he's done for the African-American community, but apparently telling the truth wasn't paying her bills. So she decided to switch her story to try and make a quick buck, and that I just can't abide by. And I think the book comes out tomorrow, but she's got tape. Uh, we heard the tape of her getting fired by John F. Kelly in the Situation Room, and I know that there is uh, perhaps some legal peril she's in for doing that, violating the rules. But then again, there's a brand new audio tape, Hogan, that they played about 90 minutes ago on the Today Show, where the next day after she was fired, she's talking to the president of the United States, uh, Donald Trump, who says, I I'm reading the paper. I had no idea you were leaving. Too bad that's happening. I feel bad about that. So it's not just that she was recording the getting firing, getting fired. She re recorded maybe a lot of people. Right. The very idea that a staff member, a former staff member, would go into the situation room and attempt to record someone else shows a complete disregard for national security. I can't believe someone would even think about doing something like that. Then on top of that, the, her character and her integrity have been impugned beyond measure. And now, to add fuel to the fire, we find out she's tried to record the president of the United States on a private phone call. I'm not going to talk about what they talked about on the phone. What I can tell you is the thought of doing right. something like that to a fellow employee, not to mention the leader of the free world, is completely disgraceful. Okay. One thing that they had a conversation with, uh, the general was saying to her, you have basically ethic, uh, et the ethic, ethical violations. What are those ethical violations? Why was she fired? Well, I can't get into uh, the specificity on personnel moves, but listen, the press have reported repeatedly on what she did and didn't do within this White House. You guys know some anchors on network television mocked and derided Amorosa to her face. I can't tell you the conversations I've had with reporters who come into my office and mocked her behind her back. So it's kind of funny now when they didn't want her on television, gave her no credence or credibility when she worked here. Now that she's turned on Donald Trump, she's the toast of the town. They're giving her time. They're giving her uh, the ability to go out and try and tell a story that is fake, that is not true, and that is full of holes and full of lies. And quite frankly, the media have some, have some uh, uh, burden to bear here because they're the ones who completely dismissed her for the entire time she was here. Well, uh, you know, she she played a tape of the president the next day after she got fired. The president called her, and she also that's the the recording that she had with the president. And he said, "What's going on? I didn't even know you were fired." And she's trying to say the president do doesn't know what's happening in the White House. Meanwhile, others have said that the chief of staff that's his job. To he he went in there and he cleaned house, and he was trying to clean up the White House. What was she really like to work with? What was her well, personality like? And what did people think of her inside the White House? Look, I always got along with Amarosa. Uh, she was someone that would come to my office periodically and we'd have conversations and meetings. I didn't see her in too many of the meetings we had with other staff uh, when we had planning meetings and things like that. I got along with her. But this is someone now that makes me concerned. I wonder if she's recording some of the things we talked about as well. You can't trust somebody who comes into your office and smiles and has a conversation and then you find out afterwards right. they leave and they're private citizens. They've been recording this information. The conversations she had with the president, the conversations that I 
I have the president, got the conversations you, at Kelly, they're all private. That's ridiculous that you would right, release but, those. But, but is it true or false? The pre was the president telling the truth and he said he didn't even know she was fired? That Kelly fired her without telling the president? Listen, the president makes the decisions in this White House. I'm not going to get into the TikTok of, of who knew what and when. What I can tell you is the president, Omarosa, had a 15-year relationship dating way back to the reality show The Apprentice. The president trusted her and gave his uh, support for her, brought her into the White House to a prominent position, uh, and she's abused that privilege. And, and that's something that, that, that that's, just, that's just horrible. And I think most Americans look at that and say, someone gave you the trust level to come into the White House, work for the administration, administration, try and make the mm -hmm. America a better place for the American people, and you just completely blew past that, ignored that for your own self-serving interests. It's a, it's a horrible thing. All right. Uh, speaking of trust, Hogan, there are a number of Republicans who do not trust the Department of Justice and the FBI because they have been asking for documents that would explain the very origins of the Russia collusion investigation because it looks like, you know, this guy, Bruce Orr, the number four guy at the Department of Justice, he was getting stuff from his wife who worked for Fusion GP. Yes, and he was putting it into the bloodstream of the FBI, even though Christopher Steele had been fired for leaking to the press. So the big question is, will the president declassify these things that all these Republicans are calling for and have been for half a year? It seems like with every day and every new revelation, the president has proven to be more correct than he was the day before. At the highest levels in the FBI, you've seen bias against Donald Trump and bias for Hillary Clinton. That is something that's unacceptable. The president is a supporter uh, unequivocally of all of the rank and file members of the FBI. He wants transparency throughout the process. Congress uh, uh, has been asking for these documents. He wants cooperation. Hogan Gidley, thanks so much. Thank the tapes of, vindicate him. Right? Speaking of tapes, Amarosa recorded that conversation with Chief of Staff John Kelly. And um, you know, it was a private situation. He fires her, she records it, and now she releases the tapes. Is she breaking the law by doing In the that? situation room. Uh, she's certainly violating national security regulations, which I think have the force of law. Uh, yeah, I would think she is. I mean, I have to look at it more carefully. And, and, and is, she, is she violating every, uh, every, every bit of trust in, uh, that she... Uh, people should have in someone. I mean, Donald Trump made her. I mean, what, what kind of ingratitude is this? Even, uh, and you can tell from the tape, he thought she resigned. Yeah, that, and, that's and, and, and John Kelly fired her. Right. Well, that, that, look, I was the chief of staff, deputy attorney general. I would often fire people who, that had to be fired. Right. The, the Today Ruth. Show just released tapes that shows that he recorded, she recorded the president as well. Calling her the next day and saying, what's going on, Omarosa? I didn't know you I were leaving. Know you were yeah, I heard a little of that tape. Uh, sounds per perfectly natural in a, in, in a situation like where he thought she was going to re she, she was resigning. He wasn't even happy about that. M most of the things about her never came to him. He, the pre they don't walk in and say to the president, I'm not just saying, Amro, but, uh, you know, so-and-so leaked something or so-and-so is fighting with this one on the white. If, if he did that, the president couldn't do his job. Uh, that, that, that's for the chief of staff to handle. And for, for her to say that Kelly pressured her, he said to her, it's non-negotiable. That's not pressuring. This is, this is a Marine Corps general. You're fired. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. he's not, not exactly going to have a bedside manner. I, uh, and I, I think Kelly probably does. But he, she, she had to be fired. She was fired. That was it. They never put anything bad about her. They never attacked her. Because he was talking on the tape that they played yesterday about uh, ethical violations regarding vehicles, maybe money as well. But he didn't want to go into the specifics because they, we have these lawyers right here who are going to, who are going to fix this. Well, and, and none of that came out. None of that. I mean, if, if Kelly wanted to hurt her uh, or anybody around the chief wanted to hurt her, it would have been in the, in, in the Washington Post the next day. She's misusing this. She's misusing that. She's, her accounts aren't in order. Everybody in the White House thinks she's a backstabber. That, a little of that did come out, that last part. But, you know, so what? Uh, Mr. Mayor, how would, you give the, how would you characterize the president's mindset this weekend? You with the oh, president weekend? played golf great yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and then he watched, uh, he watched most of the end of the, of the PGA, and he was in rare form. He was, um, he was entertaining all of his friends, um, made a bunch of calls there, thanking people for their support. Uh, it, was, uh, it was Donald Trump, you know, in campaign mode. Uh, getting ready for uh, for November and uh, starting to feel pretty good about what well, he's won nine out of ten races with all this garbage going on around him. I, I think we have them on the run. I think he's he's happy that we're calling for an investigation of 
of Mueller and and uh, and Comey. And you're waiting for Co and, and you're waiting for Mueller to get back I to think, you. And I think that's one of the reasons why he he, he put put up that tweet on Sessions, trying to wake him up. Mm -hmm. Come on. <sighs> Let's stop being an attorney general here. Let's, let's be equal. You've been investigating us forever. No evidence. How about we take a look at where there's a, lot, a big pile of evidence? Yeah. And, well, we'll and, and, and when you talk to the president, do you, do you call the president Sessions? Do you call the attorney no. general? No. He, he, he's recused. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, we, we would communi we'll, we'll communicate to Mueller, which usually means Jane Raskin with Jim Quarles. Uh, if we went to Rosenstein, that would be the person he would appeal to. And probably at the end, we'd ask for a meeting with him. Sure. Uh, he, he's, the, he's actually the decision maker. Uh, he writes the report. Mueller does. But then Rosenstein decides what to do. Because he's his boss. All right. Mm -hmm. Still lots more work to do. Okay. Rudy, thank you very much for joining <laughs> so us. Much for being here. Should be a big week. Should be. I hope so. I think this is the week, I think. All right. Really? For what? I think, I think he'll give us a decision this week on our counterproposal. It's, it, we, we're coming down to his looking really bad by interfering in the election. And I think he's got to get it over with by the, by the beginning or early September. All right. Stay this, tuned. Okay. Thank right. you, Rudy. Thank you. This is the actual last full day of the president's working vacation at his Trump National Golf Club in nearby Bedminster. And he did some tweeting this morning uh, about the economy, about the Mueller probe, uh, about Harley Davidson. But as you mentioned, the big topic on the Sunday morning shows today was and is Omarosa, the former White House aide and reality star hired and fired by Mr. Trump uh, for both The Apprentice and also his administration, has now written a book that's highly critical of the man she used to defend and call a friend. She's now telling anyone who will listen that the president is a racist and a misogynist. This morning on Meet the Press, Omarosa defended the revelation that she secretly recorded numerous meetings inside the White House including a sit-down in the Situation Room where Chief of Staff John Kelly informed her that she was done. As you'll How see in you Unhinged, I protected myself because this is a White House where everybody lies. The president lies to the American people. Sarah Huckabee stands in front of the country and lies every single day. You have to have your own back because otherwise you'll look back and you'll see 17 you know knives in your back. Well, this morning on Fox News Sunday, counselor to the president, Kellyanne Conway, questioned Omarosa's motives. Whether it's 30 pieces of silver or a seven-figure book advance for you, your publicist, your ghostwriters, and others, all that's changed was this book deal and her being fired. So I think he probably feels very betrayed. And in case you missed it, the president was asked about Omarosa during a photo op with Bikers for Trump yesterday at Bedminster. Do you feel betrayed by Omarosa, sir? Low life. She's a low life.